Good evening and welcome back to the opening night of the Galway Film Fla. Um, and if we've timed this right, then you're all just joining us from watching uh, the very end of the eighth uh, documentary, our opening night film, which I hope you all enjoyed as much as I did. Um, I'm joined now by two of the directors, Lucy Kennedy and Mabel Boyle. And we're also joined by Andrea Horan and Alva Smith. Ladies, thank you so much for being here with us this evening. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, it's great to have you all with us. It's uh, it's kind of uh, it's kind of emotional, <laughs> even though um, you know we've what we've all just been watching is uh, of the past. Um, God, I don't know. How are you feeling right now? Just you know, watching that all over again. I think we're all feeling very excited and happy and thrilled and proud. To be honest, I will speak for us, maybe. Yeah. Uh, what about you guys? Yeah, exactly. And How then, about you, Alva? Well, I just said to Andrea, we watched it together, and I said, my goodness, this is really emotional. I could just sort of felt it coming in waves. And I also felt incredibly pleased and so thrilled that Lucy and Maeve and Aideen had made this film, that we have this record of, you know, what really was an extraordinary time. Extraordinary. Yeah. It kind of feels very anxious, even though you know what's happening at the end, you're just watching it and feeling that moment where you were at that time. And you're like, oh my God, I remember that so clearly and so vividly in my nerves. And then obviously we had a few tears. There was a few makeup requirements needed. Um, <laughs> to get them back. But yeah, no, it is. It's like, it's phenomenal. And I think very proud of Maeve and Aideen and Lucy for making uh, the film and for tormenting us all the time <laughs> it was it was worth it all along and, and i just want to say i mean we're so proud to be opening the Galway film festival it's just su such a big day for us to be screening the film in ireland um it is we're, we're sad that we're not doing it in person we'd all love to be together and um, our phenomenal co-director, Aideen Kane, is in New York, and we know she's watching. Um, but we really Aideen. wish she could be here to celebrate this with us. The way we were on the day in Dublin Castle, which was just such a hugely emotional day for us all. Um, and the other person we'd like to thank as well is Alan Maher, who's, who was our co-producer uh, from Cowtown Pictures, uh, supported us uh, all the way along as well. And just a big shout out to Alan as well. And we have other people to thank maybe at the back end, but anyway, yeah, no, just- Sure, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah, crack on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw some questions at you for now, if that's okay. I actually want to just pick up on something Andrea was saying about um, you know, being transported back to that time. Um, and I kind of want to talk about the moment, just not the, the results, like obviously the moment at Dublin Castle was amazing. You couldn't have scripted a better ending for a film. Um, but that, uh, that like, oh my God moment of, you know, I think we're going to do this. Like before, before the result was in the bag, uh, maybe Alva and Andrea, you could talk about that, that, you know, oh my God, I think we're going to do this. Uh, if, if you can cast your mind back to, to then. Well, I, I mean, I'll go first and I say that all along, I thought that it was ours to lose. In other words, I thought we could win this. And I don't think myself and people like Sinead Kennedy and others would have got involved way back in 2013 if we didn't think we could win it. So all along, I felt we really could win it. And about halfway through the actual referendum campaign, so that was probably about the beginning of May, I thought, I think we're going to do it. But of course you couldn't say that because that would have been to jinx the whole thing. But I really <laughs> did feel that we had, we had kind of turned something in the country was turning around and you could feel it sort of turning over and you never know, is that going to be enough? So uh, two days before the vote, I thought, I think we're probably at 55%, but I daren't say it. So I was, I mean, completely overwhelmed and totally stunned to discover that it was 66.4%. I keep saying that because it's so amazing. <laughs> um, but you know, so it, it was a kind of progression, but there wasn't, there were times when I thought, oh my God, Jesus, we're throwing this thing away once or twice, but not much, really not very much. It was an incredible team. When I look at all those amazing women that we were looking at on screen this evening, and the men too, you know, but the women really driving that forward, it was completely phenomenal. And I, I just 
just to, to say something that I think comes across in the film that you see in a campaign, that it really calls on people to bring out the very best in themselves, doesn't it, Andrea? I mean, you know, that you can kind of feel that. I was just admiring that fantastic young woman, Lynn, um, who spoke in, in your discussion in Tropical Popical, which yeah. I thought was just amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and I suppose Lynn is amazing and is a great speaker. Um, but I, for me, not knowing what was going to happen for maybe like the two or three weeks beforehand and just having this feeling of if this doesn't pass by like one percent or two percent am I going to think I wish I had just done one more thing why wh why don't I do one more thing so it's like okay what can we do we'll do some fashion we'll do some we'll do this we'll do that and just keep kind of getting um really panicked and just trying to add on more and obviously we were outside campaigns so they're like we weren't as strategic as uh together for yes we were kind of layering things on all the time but then on the day i suppose voting what before in the film i just was reminded i was sitting with uh, with Mazer, and we were just like what will we do if, we, if this doesn't pass like i just can't get my head around how people will feel and all the energy that went into it and then I suppose we got the exit polls the night before or that night and it was kind of like oh maybe we'll do this and then um i just remember going to up to aix's savita mural and kind of just having this crash of emotion and just it all just was so overwhelming um and then go to dublin castle and it just didn't feel real and then seeing alva walk in was just i was like oh my god i'm so happy for like i know that seems silly but for alva because she's been doing this for so long and like i it was just amazing and obviously all the women in the country um and then going home and just trying to process it and not being able to but then going into the trap pop girls and having all their emotions and it was just the full circle and yeah it was a special special moment in time um uh what you said there about you know oh my god what if it's no um Lucy and Maeve, maybe you can talk about, because I mean, you know, obviously the structure of this film is it follows the campaign. Um, and maybe you can kind of take us through the journey of the film actually um, on top of the campaign, because you had started filming, it looks like from before, even, you know, from the time of the Citizens Assembly. Um, and what were you going to do if it was no? <laughs> Would it have been a completely different film? Would we still be filming? Um, so we started on the film four years ago and i mean it's a huge enterprise to try and gain the trust of people and you know thanks alva thanks andrea for trusting us um that was a risk and we appreciate <laughs> it um so we started filming and it was you know Aideen, Maeve and myself came together and it was just such a huge issue and a huge story and Four years before, you know, uh, four years ago, we didn't know what was going to happen um, at all. But it, I mean, what would you say? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, we kind of went in thinking, um, you know, we met a lot of incredible activists along the way. And, uh, you know, it was it was really kind of a brilliant, like we spent about a year meeting uh, incredible women, mainly women and men too, uh, who were fighting the fight. Uh, ultimately, we, we we met Alva and we just knew instantly that Alva was the right person to carry us through this story. She was an incredible guide, incredible activist, academic, just so articulate. Uh, she had, you know, lived through this period, you know, decades and decades of this stuff. So it had just had always fought for this. It just felt like the right person uh, to, 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 to tell this story. And so we just, it, it was just an absolute instant match in terms of Andrea as well. I have to be honest, yeah. it was just instantaneous. We knew that Andrea had this very unique um, unorthodox approach to activism. And, and that was a really interesting other way of thinking about this. And also just, I think for younger activists who are coming up, thinking about other ways to fight the fight, you know, it's, it's just really exciting. Not that, Alva was doing unorthodox, you know what I mean, or orthodox. It wasn't really like that, but it's just more, you know, just to be clear, but basically just, just different kind of ways in which to approach it and ultimately felt that, you know, uh, Andrea would be an, an amazing catch point to Alva. And then I suppose knowing that you have those two fantastic right, protagonists right. to kind of carry this story through, then it was kind of very obvious to us we need the context, we need the historical, we need to understand, we need to really be able to interweave this story over a 35 year period 
not to say that this was not daunting, it was an incredibly daunting task to try and take on something as, as massive as this. But what we did was land on these historical vignettes, as we call them, which was, um, and again, with an, an amazing, my, my brother actually was the graphic designer, Conor O'Boyle, and he basically had, you know, very invested in the issue, but also the newspaper clipping. So we could manage to teach you quickly I, I, you know, economically, I guess, uh, you know, these the, these very important uh, seminal moments in, in an Irish history over this last 35 years. And then obviously, once we had that, that those kind of two layers really, you know, covered up, but of course, we had the Together for Yes, and we, you know, we, we, we also told the campaign story. So there was also that element. But um, that was really important as well. And everybody was on board with that, which was brilliant. And so we and then and then we did approach the no side as well. And, you know, we got we did get a lot of rejection on the no side, just to be clear, but we did also, luckily, get poor Sherlock agreed, John McGurk agreed, and we did have, and Wendy Grace, of course, allowed us to film there. So we, we tried to get as full a picture as we could to tell this story. Um, and, and I suppose that was really our approach. It was piece, uh, bit by bit. We didn't do the historical until a year after we'd done the referendum. So we filmed the referendum on the fly, and that was so hectic that we just went with it. And then we ultimately went and did the historical at a later date and that was kind of, backwards a bit and then interwove that throughout the film um, just yeah. just shout out to connor as well uh may's brother sometimes in a film if something seems simple and straightforward it sort of belies the amount of work that was put into it in order to do the tune graphic connor read the entire ryan report <laughs> <laughs> he just was immensely invested in in the graphics and and we're really pleased with them they're beautiful yeah you know, the use of graphics and of archive footage was amazing sorry go ahead Alva. i was just going to say that one of the things that occurs to me if it had been a no i mean i never thought it would be but yeah. if it had been a no i remember thinking at one stage because i was aware of the huge investment of time and as well as finance of course that was going into the making of the film and I thought, oh my God, it would be so disappointing for Lucia Maven 18 if, if we don't get a yes. <laughs> but I was thinking at the same time, I was very aware that it was also about a, a film in a way about campaigning, about how you campaign and, yeah. you know, about the, the strategies and the tactics and the management and all of those kinds of things and how different layers of people um, are really important. So whether it's Together for Yes or whether it's Andrea or whoever it is, that all of that really matters. And that it would always be a really interesting film about campaigning. Um, I, You're absolutely I, right. And I think when you watch uh, John McGurk talking there about um, how he would have run the campaign completely differently and sort of used fear-based tactics, um, it just kind of stops you in your tracks. Because when you look around, there's so much of that happening in the world. Um, you know, what do you think when you see, I mean, could, I think what you guys did could be a, a lesson to, let's say, I don't know, some parts of the world that suffer from something beginning with tea and ending with rump, uh, you know, <laughs> places like that. And um, what, one thing on that, I, ju I just like to give Andrea a shout out there because Andrea's and message is always one of positivity. And I think that that's really important. Andrea, I don't know if you want to speak to that anymore. Yeah, I suppose our, tagline for our campaign was throw and some glitter on a serious issue without minimizing it and we always wanted to bring um a different audience to the table who weren't possibly reading uh, irish times uh, mm -hmm. political articles they weren't tuning into prime time and they weren't in this space and it was like how do we get these people on board who aren't antagonistic and who are um like my sister was my kind of key target market she's like she lives in a la 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 world of positivity and not engaging in these things it's like how do you make these uh women's issues red line issues for the women themselves before you can make it for the politicians so it was you have to meet people where they are rather than expect them to come to you so that was where we kind of built our campaign from a almost like a marketing campaign of how our branding was how our communications were on our social media wanting to be on other people's social media rather than on our own so it was always about um people like the way I had previously I had never really engaged in politics before but I was I want to look at politics and if I see something that's not right how can I change it rather than get angry about it and we need anger we need positivity we need glitter to be thrown we need um all these things to 
make this magical spell because without any of those you don't you miss out on a layer and it's i suppose not overlooking all the different layers or i suppose being snobby about different people or where they're at mm. is kind of engage everyone as much as you can in different ways and the more voices you have with one message uh the stronger that message will be rather than one voice with one message you're only reaching the same people over and over again Absolutely. I also loved um, the kind of the false dichotomy that you called out near the beginning of the film about, you know, sort of high femme and feminism and how, you know, these things um, aren't at odds with each other. Um, and do you think the conversation around that has changed at all since this was such a women led campaign? I think 100%, even like uh, books like Feminists Don't Wear Pink came out after it. And all this, this journey of feminism has definitely evolved um, a lot more. And it's a conversation that's always been going. And I think there's a, there's, there is a lot of division within feminism and you have all the kind of the turf stories now coming in. And it's, it's like, how do we find where our common ground is that we can all agree that we're all different people and we all have different, apart from, I don't, we don't have common ground with turfs, but obviously finding the common ground in what our beliefs are and how we can fight for a better life for everyone and not kind of have this um, pyramid of, of, of what would you say, pyramid of... Well, just a hierarchy, a hierarchy. hierarchy. Yeah, exactly. so and, and we didn't we didn't ever run anything like that. I mean, you were part of the coalition, Andrea, which brought together people whose political views and views about feminism and views about women were really very coming from very different kinds of perspectives and angles. But that was even from the outset, Alva, was so in, in, like I found it so supportive because I kind of went to you and was like, I kind of want to do this. And you were like, yeah, sure, go for it. And like there was this kind of supportive element as opposed to where we'd been shut out a little bit before. So it was kind of getting that support. It pushed us on to do what we want, what we, where we wanted to go. I think and I think, I, sorry, go ahead, Alva. Well, just, just very quickly, I think that, you know, the point of the campaign was this is not about, um, it's not about any particular one single one point of view, except that we want to repeal the Eighth Amendment so that women will be able to have abortion. And everybody who shares or who is ready to share that view is absolutely welcome and needs to, you know, get behind the wheel and keep pushing. So it, it, it wasn't hierarchical in that sense, and it wasn't intended to be. I was just going to say very briefly that I just you could feel that on the streets documenting it. There were so many different kinds of groups, so many women who were allowed out, you know, not allowed, just allowed to express themselves in, their, in the ways that they wanted to. And, you know, again, that's why we were interested in Andrea, too, which is a different kind, but also just everybody had their own unique stuff going on. And there was incredible art going on. There was yes, incredible yes. music. It was just a, a cultural fight as well as anything else. And that was what was so exciting about it. And I definitely think we tried to kind of capture that in the film, you know, a, a little bit, you know, it was, it was hard to capture it all, but uh, obviously, because it was so huge and so exciting, but, uh, you know, and vast, but ultimately it was just a really brilliant part of the campaign actually across the board. <laughs> kind of energy it was an energy that was coming up to the surface and that was turning around on its axis and that in a strange way even though I mean I'm sure everybody would say it was incredibly hard work I was just looking at our pale faces as we were watching but there was that creative energy where it, it just couldn't be it couldn't be stopped it just yes. couldn't be stopped it it. Momentum. And, and I just want to say as well although you know because of the sort of constraints of a narrative you have to choose people to follow. So we chose Alva and Andrea, but there are thousands of women, including my like sister's party, watch party that she's having in Greystones that she's been tweeting about, like with her friends, some of them who took a year off work to work on this. Yes. So like, just, this was such a huge collective effort. And I, I really, really hope that the women watching this film feel that we properly did the story justice and that, that we're representing them. Because, and, and also maybe yeah. are inspired. Inspired, To, to exactly. continue to move forward and fight the, the next fight because there's a lot of energy out there and a lot of women who are ready to go, I think. That was and the abortion fight is not over. 
you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. there is a sense sometimes that people think, oh, well, you'll just be kind of relaxing now. And I'm thinking, no, why would we be relaxing? <laughs> there, there is still so much more to be done in this country, never mind about the rest of the world, where there are ongoing problems. So it's by no means, it is a point on the way, and it was a really important point for us here in Ireland, but it was a point which opened up a pathway where we can actually begin to make decent services genuinely available for women and let's hope that that really becomes more of a reality as as the, the next year or two go, goes on yeah, yeah i'd think, actually love for you to elaborate on that a small bit alva uh, just in terms of for people who do think you know oh well that's that over with now um or had done for two years ago what uh, fronts is this fight being fought on at the moment um in this country well just just very briefly in relation to abortion, we have a review of the legislation coming up in about a year and a half. And the legislation is very inadequate and very defective. We still have a three day waiting period. Um, it's still effectively only up until nine weeks and then you get referred to a hospital. What happens after 12 weeks is anybody's guess because it's only a serious threat to the woman's health and so on. So there is a huge, um, there's a huge way to go. And fundamentally, we still in this country have a law which effectively says abortion is wrong except under certain circumstances. And I think all those of us who are pro-choice believe that it should be, you know, very much the other way around, that there shouldn't be a law, that abortion should simply be available, free, legal and safe for women, at, you know, whenever, whenever and wherever they, they need it. So that's, that's a huge job of work that still has to be accomplished and that so many organizations, including the National Women's Council and Abortion Rights Campaign and so on, who are involved in, in Together for Yes with the coalition and all of the other organizations are still fighting on. And I mean, well, you know, there are so many issues in this country at the moment. Maybe we should actually look at, um, but well said and thank you very much. Um, I just want to tell you guys there's some amazing comments coming in over social media. Um, Annie Duffy McMahon says, thank you, thank you, thank you for choosing the 8th as the opening film. I haven't cried this much about the referendum in a couple of years. Um, Ali Spallan says, um, what kind of a country were we living in? Thank you, Alva Smith. Thank you, Andrew Horn. Um, Gloria McClaverty says, um, I'm nervous uh, watching even though I know the result. <laughs> so I think we all kind of felt that way um, a little bit. Um, more comments saying it's an incredible film. Um, Susan McGrady asks about the, the rural repealers. This actually touches on um, what you were saying, um, Lucy and Maeve, about how choosing um, the leads of your film, and you can't actually talk to all the people all the time. Um, but one such example actually is some, uh, a, a, um, a powerful woman that you spoke to here in Galway was Catherine Corliss um, when you came to the, oh, the Tomb wow. Babies part of the, of the film. I mean, Catherine is an absolute legend, you know, and she, she's just an incredibly special person and really humble as well. I mean, that shoot in Tomb was, was very special and actually, you know, it was very emotional for all of us and for Aideen as well. And um, yeah, I mean, I think with, I, I don't know, do you, want to say um, more i mean i think that we the rural we it ended up like with filming with andrea and alva who are dublin based but we did go around the country and there was a lot of canvassing around the country and huge amount of work and all of these satellite together for yes offices um and groups around the country as well um so we hope you know that this this film and this referendum is 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 for everybody and and we hope that 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 people feel represented and also i think uh the incredible women who came forward and told their stories yes. were, were from all over they Ireland. were from all over and yeah. uh you know very bravely uh came forward and uh spoke about their journeys which I, I will say personally that was one of the most humbling experiences of the entire thing is just listening to women uh you know straight up telling you the, the the harrowing journeys that, that they had had it was it was an incredible uh, part of them very important for us to get that in um and and really do justice to that but and um, th those women were from everywhere so it was part of that kind of collective feeling of of, of the story at large
So, yeah, we yeah. Took yeah, I'd love to ask you about that, about the that wonderful scene with the voiceovers um, and the shots of the Irish landscape. Um, how did you go about finding those stories? Well, we reached out to a lot of groups like um, Parents for Choice were really helpful. There was multiple groups involved who um, we, we made a request and they posted on social media and we got responses. And then we went around and recorded many, many stories. And as Maeve said, it was really humbling. I mean, there's one woman um, and she's in the film who talks about her experience with domestic violence. And that I think was the most profound interview I had personally done for the film because it really, really brought it home. And I, I want to thank her and, and all of the women. All of the women. For yeah, sure. I, was... I mean, it was a real leap of faith and thank you for your trust in us. But I think that breaking of silence is yes. the really the lasting legacy of, I think, that repealed the Eighth Amendment campaign, but that's a silence that is broken forever. It doesn't mean that it's easy now for a woman to say I had an abortion, but it is not so buried um, under layers and layers and layers of stigma and um, secrecy as it was. And certainly when I look back on my own life, I mean, that is a, a huge weight that I think has been lifted by all the work that was done during the campaign. I, th I think it was somehow that we threw something behind us and said, never, we really will never do that again. Never, ever. And that's, I think that's right. And you guys did it together for yes as well. And I think that's why we structured it so that that was two thirds of the way into the film. The idea was that you had gone through this journey in the film and you got yes. to a point where suddenly there was this release, you know what I mean? Post the tune part in the film so that you had said Pandora's box opens and all this kind of stuff, you know, look at yourself in the face. And it was that same idea, you know, let's destigmatize these issues. Let's talk about them. Let's, let's, let's take this to the next level. And that was the reason why we put it right before the final, the final kind of uh, run to the vote and the referendum and so on and so forth. And that was so driven by women. I mean, I don't think we should ever forget that in this country, yeah. that that huge change was really driven by women and it changed something, of course, for women, it changed our lives in ways that I think are, are very important and that we have to go on being vigilant about, but nonetheless it did it. But it also, it changed something about the meaning of Ireland and the meaning of what it is to be Irish and or to live in Ireland, to, to be part of this country. It, it really did change something. And it came, of course, hot on the heels of the marriage equality referendum, which, um, you know, meant that we would not, maybe, who knows what will happen in the future, particularly at the moment, all very uncertain, but we will never go back to that, ever. Well, um, amen to that. Um, we have some more, Roisin Lockery says, uh, thinking of Savita, thinking of tallying in the Sligo Cout Centre, yes, yes, yes. Uh, Jason Brannigan says to Maeve, Lucy and Aideen, thank you for making the eighth. Um, Sharita Darcy says, completely captured the long hard climb to a glorious success, beautifully captured the horror of what came before and the defiance of women who refused to be shamed. Um, Andrea, just before we uh, start to wrap up, I'd love to ask you about, you talked about bringing um, sort of this, um, the voices of women who normally don't necessarily identify as being political um, into this debate. What are, um, uh, the concerns of those kinds of people now at the moment. As Alba says, this fight isn't over and the country is facing so many issues. Um, what's on the tip of people's tongues at the moment politically? I think uh, when you say these people aren't political, it, it doesn't do them justice because they are political just in a different way and just not in a typical way that is involved in the day-to-day -day runnings of the doll and the, the politics of politics per se, but they're living their lives and we're all living our lives with politics at our fore. So I suppose the main issues that we are faced with now is this whole conspiracy world coming into Ireland and uh, that kind of pushing back on the rights of women and of everyone else. So I think that is what I'm seeing for sure on social media and on an issues based uh, thing for sure. And the, the kind of far right dog whistles that are kind of radicalizing a lot of people and that is having an impact on the politics of the day-to-day -day, i think yeah. absolutely 
Um, we are going to have to wrap up, um, but I believe uh, Lucy and Maeve, you mentioned at the beginning, wanted to throw out some thank yous. Yeah, so I just wanted to thank, uh, you know, as, as everybody knows, uh, making a film is incredibly collaborative and there are some incredible key creative people on the team that would like to thank uh, my co-editor, Jordan Montmany, for an amazing, incredible insight. Connor O'Boyle, my brother, who did the graphics um, that we spoke of before, it's, it just was so committed and so beautiful. The graphics, we love them. Um, Sarah Lynch for a divine score and just beautiful composition. I, we adore her. She's amazing. Um, Matt Lee for always being there and yes, just being Matt. fantastic and just an Thank absolute. You. I just and also thinking about story all the time. Fantastic. Laura McGann. Esme Pam McNamee for doing the historical yes. uh, stuff, which is just a, a total pleasure and also just a beautiful eye. Michael O'Donovan for and, and Aidan Maguire for a lot of the sit down interviews, gorgeous, but also and Michael all the drone footage. As Michael well. all the drones, yes. and then also Michael Michael did a lot of the Dublin stuff, and Aidan did some of that too. So just thanks to all, all those guys. I think those are the many things I wanted to thank um, Alva and Andrea for just trusting us for years now and for being great partners uh, in crime. <laughs> Yeah, and um, I uh, just wanted to thank Together for Yes profoundly for letting yeah. us uh, film there and uh, for all the incredible women we met, like who are, we're friends with, uh, you know, we, we there's so many brilliant women that were involved in this that we just, it was, it was great. And also just a final shout out to all the women who shared their stories with us because we want to say a, a profound, deep thank you to them for, for trusting us to, 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 with their stories. So those of you are, that, that it, that's it, yeah. And an event like this, and um, just a film, particularly a film like this, and particularly documentary filmmaking, it's hard to make. And just want to thank Screen Ireland, you know, for their support of our film and for their support of Irish film in general. And particularly Leslie McKim, who was, you know, when Maeve Aideen and I went in with a, just a little germ of an idea, she really supported us and could see the film and see the team. Um, Abigail Disney at Fork Films, Ford Foundation, Open Society, um, Archer Gray and the Sabrina Mirage Foundation, all of these people support independent filmmaking and thanks so much for doing it because we wouldn't be here otherwise. Brilliant. Well, I'm so glad that you all were here this evening. Thank you so much for sharing the film with us. Um, thank you to uh, Aideen Kane as well, who couldn't be with us from New York. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lucy Kennedy, Maeve Boyle. Thank you, Andrew Horan. Thank you, Ava Smith. Thank you, Manana Heron. And uh, <laughs> please continue to... Uh, to join Thank us for the all week for the rest of the Galway Film Fla. Uh, join us online, hashtag Film Fla. Um, you can watch this film back again if you so please. Um, and there's many more to come. Um, thanks again, ladies, and I hope everyone enjoyed the eight. Thank you, Will. Thanks, Will. Thank you, Will. Oh, and Will, thanks to your whole team. They've been amazing. Absolutely. They and have been amazing. They're a great team. They're <laughs> super. Absolutely. Yeah. Very best of luck. Thanks, guys. Thank Bye. You so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.